What up, B-words? YouTube doesn't like it when you swear in the first couple minutes of your video, so that's why I'm saying, what up, B-words? Ya boy got a PS5. Now it's been uh, about eight months. The crew is finally here. Me and old Sony are gonna get to hang out. I get a new camera, by the way. A gamer comes outside only once in a blue moon. Also, uh, no, I did not buy this from a scalper. Sup, dog? Got a PS5 here. I wanna sell it to you, boy. $1,500, you want this PS5? Oh yeah, I bet you want it. $1,500, baby, come on to eBay. We got scalpers for days, baby. Come on down to eBay. Fuck scalpers, dude. Take that, scalper. Another invisible scalper, hey? I'll take you on. Never give in to scalpers, guys. That's my lesson for you today. Always wait it out, never retreat, never surrender. That is Spartan. Oh, that's another PlayStation 5 under Republic control. Hostile reinforcements are being depleted. The point is, it took a long time to get here. So here's what I'm gonna be doing, folks. I'm gonna be giving you some brief first impressions of a bunch of PS5 games. I have neglected my Sony fans, and now your boy is here. Dad has come back from the grocery store, and I'm here, okay? It is a beautiful day to go back inside and play video games. But what's even more exciting, you ask? Why? Getting a pair of the Raycon Everyday Earbuds. That's right, lords and ladies, Raycon is bursting through the electronics industry with their premium wireless earbuds. These bad boys go for half the price of other premium brands. Don't buy some crappy headphones, man. Stick with Raycon. Your wallet will love you. The Everyday Earbuds come with six hours of playtime. It's easy to sync with your phone through Bluetooth, and the compact design means you can take them anywhere, no hassle. With a wide array of colors and sizes, Raycon earbuds are sure to be the perfect fit. Uh. This company was co-founded by Ray J, and even big celebrities like Mike Tyson and Snoop Dogg are a big fan of the Raycons. But if you aren't totally 100% satisfied, have no fear, there's a free 45-day return policy. So go treat yourself, you deserve it. Go to buyraycon.com slash actman using the link in the description and I'll give you 15% off your entire order. That's buyraycon.com slash actman. Thank you Raycon for sponsoring this video. Ad time over. Let's talk about the console first now that I have it in my glorious hands. I did not realize how big this thing was. Since I don't have an Atari 52 or 2600, the PS5 is the biggest console I own. Sony is flexing hard, bro. Comes in the largest box, too. I pulled down all this crap from my shelf just to show you. Damn. So what do you get with something that takes up that much space? Well, the PS5 is compatible with all PS4 titles, and of course, Sony is waving their exclusives right in your face. In this video, I'm gonna check out Astro's Playroom, Demon's Souls Remake, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, Spider-Man Miles Morales, and games I wanna check out are Sackboy The Big Adventure, Returnal, and Destruction All-Stars. These are pretty much all the exclusives PS5 has to offer, at least the ones I care about. This is pretty sick though, I finally get to compare it with the Series X. Name a more iconic duo. I'll wait, Shrek and Donkey. Sony and Microsoft are approaching exclusives in two radically different ways. Microsoft is pushing the Series X like, you can buy the new console if you want, but you don't have to. We're Xbox and we don't want you missing out on Halo Infinite. While Sony's like, sup bitches, we got Ratchet and Clank, only one place you can play it. Don't have a new console, you better find one. While I appreciate Microsoft's approach, I totally think they need to buckle down and release some genuine Series X exclusives if they want to compete. But let's stack these bad boys up together. Finish the console wars. Hey, it's me, Nintendo. Don't forget about the brand new Switch OLED. Shut up. The PlayStation 5 looks cool vertically, but on its side, I don't know about that one, Chief. I don't like it. Neither console looks just right on its side. Baby, if you aren't the Wii, just keep it symmetrical. Symmetry, dear Steinman. It's time we did something about symmetry. 
OG Xbox, symmetrical. ZDN64, it's symmetrical. GameCube, symmetrical. Sega Genesis, symmetrical. You get the idea. What's got me fucked up is this little stand it sits on. But if you try to pull the PS5 towards you to mess with the cords, it just comes straight off. God damn, I keep having to put this thing back on. There we go. Perfect! The UI is similar to 4, although I'm not the biggest fan of artwork taking up three-fourths of the screen. The storage is nice, I'm gonna fill her up real quick. That's what he said. And what's really cool is how easy Sony is making it to record gameplay and take screenshots. There's a whole button just dedicated to it. It lets you record up to the entire session or just 30 seconds, 5 minutes. So for YouTube dorks like me, this will make my job way easier. Although you need an external hard drive or have to post it to YouTube to actually get it on your computer. Unlike Xbox, which just lets you download it straight from a website. No hassle. Every game I've played has also had a built-in photo mode, which is hella dope for artistic people. Making thumbnails, looking at the Maiden in Black's feet. Oh, that shouldn't be in the video, please cut that. Also, the PS5 records a 15 second clip for every trophy you get. And all you achievement hunters have to be salivating at the thought. Sony has given its fans all the right tools they need to be creative. Although neither Series X or PS5 come with a headset, so you'll have to cough up more dough if you want to tell your friends you slept with their mom last night, which I intend to do. Now here's where things get kind of fucky. The Astro A40s I got for the Xbox One work on the Series X, even though there's no optical port. All I had to do was just plug them into the computer, do a firmware update, bada bing bada boom. Sony, on the other hand, well, surely these Astro A50s will work on new hardware, right? Wrong! Wrong because this son of a bitch doesn't have an optical port either. Look, I know most TVs come with that built in and Microsoft and Sony can save some money by not including an optical port, but I have a sound system and first world problems to go along with it. My point is please don't make me buy a $45 adapter and follow a 23 step program just to hook up a headset to my PS5 so I can tell my best friend I slept with his mom last night. Sony may have a better library of games, but they're not a better company than Microsoft. All their fucking products have compatibility issues, like their Apple. My Elgato 4K doesn't work with PS5. I had to use my older one. I tried plugging in three separate USB drives, none of which were compatible with PS5. Had to buy a new one. If I want to use all this crap with Microsoft, they made it free. But with Sony, that's an extra $260. But now let's check out the games. Ooh, baby, Knack 3, here we come. I'm gonna tell him. Don't you dare. 12 seconds later. I have just been informed that Knack 3 has not even been announced yet. Guess that's the end of the video. Oh, what's this? Astro's Playroom? Eh, I'll give it a shot. But before we do that, we gotta talk about this beautiful DualSense controller because it is blowing my mind right now. I'm gonna call it the DualShock 5 though just to make PlayStation fanboys sweat. Astro's Playroom is a tech demo, but also a very decent game on its own. Kind of like how Wii Sports showed off what the Wii's motion controls were capable of. Astro's Playroom does as good a job selling the PS5, its ingenuity, and what makes it unique. You really have to hold the controller in your hand to understand the progress that's been made. I'll do my best to show it off. I can feel the vibration, that's what she said, all the way through the controller from top to bottom. This thing can rumble in any number of different ways. It's not just the whole controller all at once, you get what I mean? Like when I'm walking around there's this very slight rumble for my footsteps. It's not annoying, it's immersive. The adaptive triggers have resistance so you can do a full press or a half press. In Rift Apart you can empty one or two barrels of the shotgun based on how you pull the triggers. The touchpad is responsive, I wish I could draw a penis for you guys but I'm sure you can find one on the walls of your high school bathroom. The touchpad is more niche, probably used for like mini games. Next, all these little dudes fall into the controller, and this is dope. Now you got the dynamic rumble and motion controls. What is this wizardry? My inputs are being mirrored on screen. Also, the controller only vibrates when I shake it. It's like there really are tiny robots inside. This will definitely be used for racing games as the steering is very responsive. Lastly, there's a microphone, which is just a gimmick. The DualShock 4 had some of these features, but Sony is really pushing these features to the max. Especially the sound that comes through the controller. It's amazing. 
The sound of rain hitting my umbrella is coming through the controller, not the TV. And that's awesome. By separating the sounds like that, it makes the more immediate noises right there next to you. It, it's hard to describe how cool it is. But this is a lot of features to pack into just the controller. Xbox got nothing like that. To me, the DualShock 5 is what's really selling the PS5 as a next-gen console. It's a vivid combination of motion controls, dynamic rumble, audio through the controller. This feels like the in-between of VR and standard gaming. I would say this is console gaming at its most advanced in my lifetime. But anyways, Astro's Playroom is a decent platformer carried by its charm and nostalgia. Everything is PlayStation related. The collectibles are different consoles or attachments. You can move them around with the motion controls and they got little descriptions. PS4. Promised greatness, delivered more. The dudes at Sony were really stroking their cocks when they wrote that one. This game literally takes place in a PS5 with levels like GPU Jungle, SSD Speedway, Cooling Springs, all of course representing the hardware. These wire bridges are PS1 controller ports. The flowers are button symbols. There's countless references to other PlayStation franchises like God of War, Silent Hill, Resident Evil. They even got Snake from Super Smash Brothers in here. This is giving me secondhand nostalgia. And damn, does the soundtrack slap. Astro's Playroom is a novelty game and not that challenging, but it has some of the coolest gadgets and tricks I've ever seen. I genuinely hope that other PlayStation 5 games can make use of this technology in ways that are more than just gimmicky. So here's MLB The Show, a baseball game, and I can include that this is in fact baseball. But I'm not trying to learn how to play it, so let's check out the reason I got a PS5. Demon Souls. I'm a tomato. So here's a hot take for you. You guys know the game is actually called Demon's Souls, as in the souls of the demon. Yeah, but nobody pronounces it that way because you have to pause when you say Demon's Souls. Otherwise, it sounds like you're saying Demon's Souls. Demon's Souls. Well, f fuck it. Let's call it Demon Souls. This game is beautiful. Even in HD, it looks next gen. I've been looking forward to playing this for eight months, and my god, it was worth it. Visually, this is one of the greatest remakes I've ever seen. It's stunning how much of an upgrade this is while still retaining the original art style. Every single weapon, piece of armor, NPC, enemy, boss has had a complete overhaul. Bluepoint really knocked it out of the park with the sound effects. Just listen to this. That armor clanking, the rubble breaking, slicing of swords. I love this slower paced combat. They also nailed the tone and atmosphere. Areas like the Shrine of Storms are breathtaking. Damn, Balataria, you looking fine as hell. Demon Souls really deserved this stellar treatment, being the first entry in the long running Souls franchise. Unfortunately, this is a very faithful remake of Demon Souls. So all the great stuff about it is here, and all the terrible shit is here too. This game is definitely top two in the franchise for difficulty. Checkpoints are only earned after defeating a boss, so if you die, you go all the way back. Oh, and you also lose half your health. And if you die in human form, the enemies get stronger. And your healing items don't replenish, so if you're having trouble, it's gonna get harder. I do like Demon's Souls' more old-fashioned difficulty, but it's definitely gonna deter new players. Demon's Souls also had a problem with multiple bosses being easily cheesed from afar with 300 arrows. Like, why didn't you guys just make an actual boss fight for the Red Dragon? Why do you have to kill it in the same stupid way? Why does the Vanguard demon refuse to fight me outside of this 5 meter square? Why in fuck's name can't I compare the stats of my armor to those in a shop? Literally every RPG ever made lets you do that. Don't get me wrong, I love the original and the remake even more. But there's a lot of shit in this game that should have been fixed, and they just didn't. Whether that was laziness, or they didn't think there was anything wrong with it, or they just wanted to be super faithful, those old problems are still here. Hey, little boy! Little boy! And I think you could have changed that while still keeping the integrity of the game. 
But I don't want to talk too much about Demon Souls because I plan to do a full review on it. So let's check out Rift Apart. I mean, we haven't done anything heroic in <laughs> years. What if everyone thinks we're washed up? <gasps> oh, what if we are washed up? Oh, like Banjo Kazooie? Yeah, you guys are all right, I think. You know, this is my first time playing a Ratchet and Clank game, and I'm impressed. Every title I played on the PS5 has been stunning in the graphics department. Even for a rookie like me, the story isn't super jarring or relying on playing previous titles. I got a sense of their personalities within the first 30 minutes. It does have that cartoony charm that I love so much in Banjo-Kazooie. I'd also mention the load times in every game are pretty much non-existent. Really putting that SSD to good use. So much craziness happening in the background. Ratchet's moves are so nimble. The enemies are fun and cartoony. What tends to bother me about a lot of Sony games is they have like three minutes of gameplay followed by five minutes of cutscenes. And that formula for like 20 hours is really fucking annoying to me. Have your cutscenes and then, and then let me play a good chunk of the game before you give me more cutscenes. That's just the way I like it. But Ratchet and Clank seems to be the former. Play three minutes of game, five minutes of cutscenes. But yeah, this is awesome. I love the art style, characters' expressions are realistic, and the shooting is fun, if a bit simple. They're making use of the adaptive triggers with the grenades and double-barreled shotgun, giving you two ways to use them in battle. Rift Apart is a lot of fun, and I'm eager to see what else it has to offer. Last on our list, did somebody order a hip-hop Spider-Man? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. What up, Miles, my boy? You look like you've been running, Miles. <laughs> hey, uh, you think you're gonna add that new Spider-Man too? The kid? Yeah, uh, maybe. Original's just my guy, you know? Yeah, I know. To be honest, I wasn't really sure about like, hey, here's a new Spider-Man, but Miles comes across as very charming right away. And they're not just like, oh, Peter Parker's not even in this. Like, like it's him and Miles. There, There's two Spider-Mans now. I like this. I like this angle. You know, I really like Miles, especially since he has the exaggerated swagger of a... Well, you know. Moving around the city feels so good. I could do this all day. And I like the angle of the story so far of Peter Parker being like the seasoned Spider-Man and Miles Morales is the up and comer trying to get used to this new role. Helix 2 is down. No casualties. No casualties? That shit demolished a cop car. Again, another Sony trait is like characters can't seem to stop talking for any reason whatsoever. It's like all this action is happening and the characters are like constantly talking shit. You'd think they'd be out of breath running at like 30 miles an hour and being like cracking jokes and shit. It's not bad, but just like, damn, can I focus on the action for a bit? Do you have to constantly bombard me with one-liners and jokes? I think this rhino guy is voiced by the same dude that does Nikolai and Cod Zombies. Hang on tight, tiny spider! I think I'm alone now. There doesn't seem to be anyone around. You can also do aerial tricks like it's Tony Hawk's Pro Skater for bonus XP and style points. This is a lot of fun. Gotta be honest, pizza time. Sony is really showing the world they know how to make a Marvel game better than Marvel themselves. I know Marvel's not a game developer, but you get the idea. So far, this is a hella good beat-em-up with tons of different combos and an engaging story. I'm loving it so far. With Peter Parker going away for three weeks, Miles Morales is New York's only Spider-Man. I'm New York's only Spider-Man. Please don't screw this up. Overall, I'm very impressed with the PlayStation 5's new innovations. So here's the positives. Good specs and a greater focus on recording clips, making it accessible and easy. A photo mode included in every game that lets players get creative. All the games have quality of life stuff like adjusting the color and size of subtitles. And PlayStation Plus has given Xbox Live a run for its money. Shit, I was able to nab God of War, Persona 5, Last of Us, and Uncharted 4 for free, baby! The games are fun even if they all could technically be played on a PS4. The 4K resolution and advanced controller make it all worthwhile to me. Like I said, the DualSense is the most innovative standard controller I've played with. I'm looking forward to giving a full review on Demon's Souls Remake and potentially Rift Apart. Here are the negatives. 
having to pay extra money to make your add-ons compatible with Sony's bullshit if you're unlucky and don't already have the correct stuff. The console design on its side leaves a lot to be desired, as does the backwards compatibility. Oh, what's that you got Last of Us on PS3? What's that, you wanna pop in Demon's Souls to see what it was like back then? Too bad, you have to buy those games again. I do despise a lot of Sony's policies, but at the same time, their games are so kick-ass. And at the end of the day, that is what matters most. So to wrap up the console wars, I would say the Series X and PS5 are about on even ground. If you take away Sony's bullshit, they would come out on top. If Microsoft had more legit exclusives, they'd come out on top. So, it's even. All right, folks, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this uh, first impressions of PlayStation, PlayStation 5. I'm getting back into it, folks, okay? I'm gonna do right by my Sony and PlayStation fans, okay? Don't forget to shun every single scalper you ever see online. Shame them into the utter depths of oblivion, for they have no life. Subscribe to the Actman, subscribe to my second channel, follow me on Twitter, blah, 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 do the thing, social media. Peace! Scalpers have gained a PS5. That's another PlayStation 5 under Republic control. Enemy scalpers have captured a PlayStation 5.